to us even more on his website. So this is coming to Bracebridge in 10 years. You ready? <laughs> it's already here. That's what I can. Okay, I've heard that before. So what do these folks want? At the end of the day, the number one reason this group now travels is culinary tourism. This is incredibly important. This group will fly to Italy to take pasta making classes. They will easily drive the two hours from Toronto or so to come up here if they have a great culinary experience. It's at the top of the list. But you know they want to learn something. Think about this, of the 272 international or in North American televised cable channels, 272 of them, the Food Network is in the top seven. I think it ranks sixth. It cares if people are 10 years old and 100 years old. Go figure. And so culinary is at the top of the list. Number two is art. And did you know that when people meet the artist, they're four times more likely to buy art? because they made a personal connection. It's at the top. But notice the word education keeps popping up. Ethnic events, whether it's Aboriginal, whether it's Scandinavian, whether it's Acadian, whatever it is, we also want to learn and experience other cultures. And that's very important. And by the way, tourism is the front door. And speaking of that, it's a $23 billion industry. Are you getting your fair share? Or is it all staying in Toronto? Okay, let me keep going down this list. They also like gardening. It's the fastest growing hobby in North America. Maybe that's something to do with the aging population, but it's incredible how much money is being spent. And then finally, farmers markets, public markets are now part of a draw for visitors as well as locals, but they still want to learn something. So. It's at the very top of the list. And by the way, communities are now developing permanent year-round public markets. Not just pop up and take down every Thursday or Saturday from 10 to noon or whatever it is. Permanent. And they're big draws. So that's the baby boomers and what they like. And then there's the echo boomers that were born 1977, 1994. Is anybody born in that period? Okay, a few people. Did I just nail your parents or what? Okay, how many of you were born between the two periods? Oh, you don't count. No. <laughs> yeah, you've heard that before. <laughs> no, you're kind of in that, kind of in the in-between. But this group here is what we call the echo boomers. We can get on that X, Y, Z stuff, but these are the kids of the baby boomers for the most part. And so, but look at this. They also like culinary. They also like the art, artists in action, learning new hobbies, education. They also like the ethnic events, but make it hands-on, experiential. And then they also add environment. Kayaking, rock climbing, do you know rock climbing is the fastest growing sport of people in their 20s? Canoeing, extreme recreation, you know, public markets, farmer markets, but add to entertainment. And this group wants third places. If your youth are growing up in Bracebridge and then when they graduate from high school, they're leaving and not coming back, there could be a reason for that. And that's because they want third places. Let me explain that. The first place is the place we live, it's our home. The second place is the place we work. And then the third place is the place we go to hang out. And that is downtown. I will tell you that when we started asking young people in their 20s, early 30s, here in Bracebridge, working in your retail shops downtown or in your restaurants, we asked them where they went to hang out. You know where they said? All of them. We go to Huntsville to hang out. They did not say Bracebridge. So, you got some challenges. Okay? Your downtown is a critical effort in your tourism efforts, and that is really important to know. You should be joined at the hip. If locals don't hang out in downtown Bracebridge, then neither do visitors. We where you go. We go where you go. We do. We look for the restaurants where there's the most local cars parked out front. I mean, that's what we do. So both these groups, there you go, they're independent, they have high expectations. Okay? They want specifics, not generalities. We're going to talk a lot about that. 
Think activities, not places. Okay? They look for videos, photos, third party reviews. There you go, TripAdvisor, Yelp. As a matter of fact, every place we ate was something we looked up on Yelp and TripAdvisor. And I'll tell you where we ate when we were here and what we thought. And by the way, if you watch those, you'll see some reviews. I'm a senior reviewer for TripAdvisor. So you're going to see some reviews coming about Race Break. Most of them are pretty good. I thought I'd better do that after I left town. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just kidding. So that is the generational thing. That's the second big ingredient to change. And the third one is that the internet has changed everything. It has totally revolutionized the travel industry, economic development, everything. Matter of fact, 90% of all Canadians have immediate access to the internet, whether it's at home, whether it's at work, whether it's on iPads, iPhones, Blackberries, you name it, mobile devices. And out of that group, 94% of them use the internet to decide where they're going to travel, where they're going to live, where they're going to work, where they're going to even establish a business. They go to the web. But one thing is, is when they go to the web, they do not type in Bracebridge. They might type in Muskoka Air, but what they do is they type in Kayaking Ontario, in this case. Or we put up here, Wedding Destinations, Muskoka. You know, somebody's in Toronto, say, I always want to get married up there in the lakes. And, or they might type in, let's see what else I tried right here, you know, boating, Northern Ontario, you notice how I kind of put them in parentheses to keep the words together. But you notice what I'm doing up here is I am not typing in the place first, I'm typing in the experience. Don't you, when you go to the web, you look for the activity you want and then the general location, whether it's Muskoka, whether it's Huntsville, whether it's Bracebridge, the location is always second. Galleries near Huntsville. Do you show up in Bracebridge? You're near Huntsville. See what I mean? But we always type in experience, job opportunities, you name it. That has changed everything. So location is second to the primary draw that one thing that puts you on the map. So you must quit marketing geography. And you know what? The heart of Muskoka is geography. How's that working for you? I went into a community where it was in California and it was called Manteca. And they said the heart of California. Have you ever gone anywhere because it was the heart of something? We don't. That's all that is, is a geographic designation. I get it, you're between Gravenhurst and Nunsville, but you know what? That's not what's gonna get us here. Because we could easily drive right past you to go to Huntsville, if we're coming from the south. And so, they had, and they said, I said, so you know, you just did this, Heart of Manteca, they're all wearing Heart of California t-shirts in Manteca, you know, nice polo shirts and everything, and, and I said, you know what? That's not really a brand, that's just a location thing still doesn't tell me what puts you on the map. And they said, Roger, we just spent $125,000 to do all that. And they threw it away. Because geography doesn't matter. And so, there you go. Or have you ever gone anywhere because it was the center of it all? No, we don't. And that's the problem. But because we're so busy marketing geography, our location, People are, 70% are frustrated with their planning on the left. <laughs> that looks like you? Yeah. yeah. Been there, done that? And by the way, 86% of people don't go past the second page of search results. So I typed in live music, put it in quotes, plus Muskoka, so there had to be both words or both sayings there, and I still got 278,000 results in 0.22 seconds. So am I ever going to find you if you're on page 943? Somebody is, and that's the challenge. If you want new business, residents or visitors, starts in front of a computer screen. But you know what most communities do? I'll bet you do it too. I have a stack of brochures this thick on your area in Bracebridge. And I'm not even talking about the Muskoka stuff. Brochures for all your B&Bs and hotels and for downtown and you name it. I'll bet you spend more money on printed materials than you do on the web, and if so, you have it backwards. So, the web is where it's at. It should be your number one priority, and by the way, it better be good enough to close the sale. That means it needs to have specifics. It has changed everything. And number four, 
We are drowning in advertising overload. We're exposed to 5,000 marketing messages a day. Whether it's on license plate frames, whether you saw it in here, whether it's on signs, billboards, radio, television, you name it, 5,000 a day. We're so overexposed to advertising that it's created a situation where 97% of community-based marketing is now ineffective. 97%. Pretty sad, huh? And that includes your brochures, websites and internet advertising, flyers and posters, you name it, radio and television ads, print ads, I mean, I could go down the list, billboards, and here's why because we filter out everything that doesn't directly to appeal to us. So, just about everybody saying the very same thing, we just tune it out. I just took that picture, where's that guy? <laughs> <laughs> so here's the big question you have to answer in Race Bridge. You ready? What do you have that I can't get or do closer to home? What do you have that I can't, if I, you know, let me, let me show you a little clip from the movie Vacation. Pretty good comment there. If everything were just like home, there'd be no reason for leaving home. See what I mean? So what do you have in Bracebridge that I can't get or do closer home if I live as far away as Huntsville? Or Barrier, or Raleigh, or Collingwood, or Ravenhurst? I didn't even mention Toronto. And by the way, there's a ton of lakes and water places we can go if we live in Toronto, including the Great Bruce Peninsula and Perry Sound and, and uh, Owen Sound and all those areas. And there's a lot of lakes. I mean, we're working in Barrie. They're right on a nice big lake down there, Simcoe. See what I mean? And that's the problem. So what do you have in Bracebridge that I can't get or do closer to home? So the world is at our fingertips to say, we'll talk about San Jose. Okay? So what sets you apart from everyone else? Why should I invest in your community? Why should I move here? Why should I visit you? What makes you worth a special trip? So, whatever it is that makes you different or clearly better, and if it's clearly better, can because you say so, we're going to talk about some of the slogans I heard about Bracebridge. You know, it has to be by third-party endorsement. Competition has never been more fierce. Here's the economic development dudes battling it out. <laughs> Communities have been forced to specialize. So, yet most are stuck in the mire of what we call the group hug mentality. If I asked everybody in the room, what should Bracebridge be known? And I'm going to hear waterfalls, and I'm going to hear Santa's Village, and I'm going to hear lake recreation, and I'm going to hear we're a quiet, peaceful town. I'm going to hear all the ideas. And you know what happens is, because you can't do branding by public consent, I'm going to talk about that. You know what we do? We all get in a circle, we hold hands, we squeeze into the middle, and we say, group hug, everyone. Come to Bracebridge. We have something for everyone. Isn't that special? <laughs> and that's what everybody says. And then we stand for nothing. And that's the problem. Worse is the membership mentality. I call it the chamber of commerce mentality. I pay my dues and I don't agree with that direction. <laughs> See what I mean? So why should I join? Right? That's the membership mentality. But in this age of differentiation, you must outwit, outplay, outlast your competition. It is a brand new game. And how do you stand out from the crowd? How many places can have something for everyone? So welcome to the era of the brand, the art setting Bracebridge apart from everyone else. 